In today's video, we're going to be having a look at another way of extracting your local keys from your Tuya devices in order to make use of the local Tuya integration in Home Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. In my previous local Tuya video, I showed you how to extract your keys using the Tuya developer tools. Well, if I've already showed you how to do this, why am I showing you again? Well, in the last couple of weeks since creating that video, Tuya have been updating their API. And one of the significant changes they've made is they've changed the way that accounts work if you set up a new account now. Just to give you a bit of a heads up, the next couple of minutes is just going to be me talking about the recent changes to the Tuya developer tools and how those changes have affected the previous method for extracting your local keys. Now, if you're not interested in any of this, be sure to make use of the chapters below and just jump ahead to the what you're going to need for this project. If you're sticking around for this bit, let's have a quick look at the recent change that's affected the previous method for extracting your local keys. The actual change that's an issue is this part here. And in this change, any project that was created after the 24th of March can no longer use this link devices by products. And in that previous tutorial I showed you, that's the part where we link our Smart Life app to the two year developer tools and then we get that little QR code and then when we scan that it's linked and it pulls all of our devices in. If you created a project before the 24th of March you should have no problem following that tutorial. Since this change has come about I have spoken to a few people that have actually created accounts and projects after the 24th of March and they've been able to see this link devices to products and they were able to follow along with the previous video with no issues at all. A few other people have said that they followed along and it was missing and they spoke to the two year tech support and the tech support enabled the actual link devices on their account. Now I actually had a go at this myself. I created a brand new account and a brand new project and sure enough that link devices by products was missing. Using that contact us on the two year page, I got in touch with their technical support and asked them if this link devices by products, if it's been permanently removed, is it temporary, like what's going on? And I got no feedback or response about that. Um, I then messaged them again to say can I have this enabled on my account and I got response from someone a couple of minutes later saying if I refresh the page then this would show up. So I did that and there was still nothing. I messaged back saying hey I've refreshed the page and nothing's happened and I didn't get a response then for two days and then two days later I got a notification from them saying if you create a new IoT account then this link devices by products will actually be there. So I created a new account and still nothing. So to me, that doesn't seem super stable. For some people it's there, for some people it's not. Some people can request it and get it, some people can't. And over the last couple of weeks, the developer tools has changed quite a lot. So while it might be there today, it could be gone tomorrow. You never know what's gonna happen really. And with today's video, we're gonna be getting the local keys and we're not gonna be using these developer tools whatsoever. And you might be thinking, if there's another way to get the local keys and you knew about it, how come you didn't show us that way in the first place? Well, in my opinion, I think that the developer tools is a much simpler way just because all you've got to do is create an account on the website, tick a couple of boxes, and then you're good to go. And while the method I'm going to show you today isn't difficult, there is just a few extra steps, which is why I opted for just using the website. So enough blabbering on about that. Let's say goodbye to the developer tools and get on with our new method. Okay then, Mark, if we're not using the developer tools, what are we using to get our local keys from our two devices? The method we're going to be using today is extracting the local keys from the Smart Life app on a rooted Android device. And if you're an Android user with a rooted device and also have the Smart Life app, then be sure to use the chapters below and just skip over the whole emulator setup because you can jump straight into the actual key extraction. As always then, let's have a look at what we're going to need in order to complete this tutorial. And I think this list is actually pretty short. There's just two bits of software we need. So first up, we need the BS Tweaker or BlueStacks Tweaker. And secondly, we need blue stacks. Now, there'll be links for these in the descriptions below, so go ahead and grab those. For now, you can just download them to your desktop and we'll run through the install together in a second. There is also a third bit of software that we can download, but this one's entirely optional. And all it is is just a C Sharp script that I've written myself. And what it's going to allow us to do is just print out our keys and it's just nice and simple. If you're interested in that, then download that. In this video, I will show you how to use that. And I'll also show you the manual way if you don't want to use that. And that code will also be on GitHub if you want to just go and read that code or have a play around with it. Another download we're going to need to get is the Smart Life app and we're going to grab this from APK Mirror. Now the important thing to note here is that it's version 3.6.1 and it needs to be this version 3.6.1 in order for this tutorial to work. 
There'll be a link for this download in the description below, so go and download that and stick that on your desktop. If you're following this tutorial to get your device local keys in order to make use of the local Tuya integration in Home Assistant, you're obviously going to need a working version of Home Assistant. You're also going to need to have hacks installed. If you have no idea what hacks is or how to go about installing it, I'll link a video that I've created which will show you the setup and installation of hacks. So go and check that out and then come back here. Okay, the last thing we need to do then is just hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you press the notification bell, you'll be alerted to whenever I bring out a future video. If you've got all those things, let's get on with it. Okay, so we downloaded BS Tweaker and Bluestacks and we can see those on my desktop just here. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is just extract the contents of BS Tweaker. Now you can use whatever your preferred unarchiver is or just a Windows 10 default one. In this case, we're using WinRAR, but you can just right click on it and we're gonna say extract to the BS Tweaker folder. And once that's done, we're gonna just end up with the folder here. Just for clarification, I'll have on screen the versions of BS Tweaker and Bluestacks that I'm using for this particular video. And those should be the versions that I'm linking to in the description. Okay, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do then is just to run the Bluestacks installer. In the Bluestacks installer, we're just gonna accept the software license and we're just gonna hit install now. Then just give that a minute to install. Once that's done then, we'll see a little installation complete in the bottom right there. I'm just gonna hit launch. This is then going to take us to the Bluestacks dashboard. We can just click close on this Google Play sign in and just skip through these little pop-up messages. And then we want to just press on My Games on the split tab at the top. You're then going to need to get your Smart Life APK from wherever you downloaded it to. I've just dragged mine to the desktop here, so I'm just going to double click on that. And you'll see that that starts installing in Bluestacks. Again, just to reiterate, the reason we're using this APK is just because it's an older version of Smart Life. In the newer versions of Smart Life, you can't actually access the local keys using this method. So once that APK is installed, we're just gonna run the Smart Life app here. We then need to press login. You need to agree to the terms and then just log in with whatever details you use for your Smart Life account. Once you press login, you should see all of the devices that are linked to your Smart Life account. We're then done with the Smart Life app, so we can just close out of this at the top here. Once the Smart Life app's closed, we're just gonna minimize Bluestacks. We're then gonna open BS Tweaker from the folder we extracted it to earlier on. So we're gonna click on that one, and BS Tweaker 6. Then we're gonna click the bluestackstweaker.exe. That should then pop up a loading bar. And once that's done, it's gonna give us this little control panel. From here then, we're gonna just press on File Manager, and what we need to do now is just navigate to the config file that Smart Life just created. So at the top of this control panel, we've got three options. We're going to choose data here. We're then going to scroll down and go for data again. This will show us all the applications installed on our emulated device. We're just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And we should see com.tuya.smartlife there. So just press on that one. We then want to press shared prefs. And we should see two different preference underscore global dot keys. And the one that we want is the preference underscore global with key and then a bunch of different characters after it. What we need to do now is just copy that config file from the virtual device across to our desktop. And this control panel is split into two sides. This left hand side here is our window side and the right hand side is the virtual device. So it's quite straightforward. On the top, you've got all of your different drive letters. So just navigate to wherever you're gonna store it. So for me, I've gone for C, users, and then my desktop. And then all you need to do is just grab the config file and just drag it across. There's one that I did earlier on, but I'm just gonna overwrite that for the sake of this video. And once that's done, it will just appear there on the desktop. Once we've done that, we can just close the file manager. In BS Tweaker, if we click this little stop button here, it's gonna stop Bluestacks. So just press that. And then we're also just going to close BS Tweaker. And with those couple of steps, we've actually just exported our local keys and all of the information about all of the devices on our Smart Life account. And all of that info is just in this XML file. Now, at the beginning, when I said you need to have a rooted device, that would be if you're using an Android device, because to get that particular file and config, your device needs to be rooted. So if you're doing this on an Android device, you'll just need to go to that set path, which I'll probably have on screen somewhere now or and it will also be in the description 
So just go to that path and grab that file and then just export it to somewhere that's accessible for you. As I said, these devices now contain all of our local keys and the information about our two devices. So I've made a duplicate here and I've just modified the information inside of it so that I'm not sharing my whole config with all of YouTube. I'll open this up and show you the manual way of getting your keys from this file. So I'm just going to open it with the default Windows editor. So I'm just going to right click on it and choose edit. For me, this has opened up in WordPad and what we can see here just kind of looks like a bunch of gobbledygook XML. Now that's not super readable and if you're only after your local keys and your device IDs, it's quite hard to find them through that. The easiest way that I found for finding them is just by doing a simple search. So in your document, you can do control on F, which will do a find. Then if you do a search for local key and hit find next, it will take you to a match. So we can see here that this one's found a match on local key. So just after the word local key, there'll be a string with a bunch of different characters and numbers in and this particular string is actually my local key. We can't really see what device that actually is, so reading on from here, we'd have to read on a little bit to find the actual name. So I can see here it says name, and then the name of that device then is tracker. So I know from my devices that that's my actual robot vacuum. And it doesn't really make a difference if you use any of the text editor. So if you use Notepad++ or VS Code, anything like that, the formatting for it is still pretty horrible. So you can, if you want to, just comb through that and find your local key, your device ID and the name, but it's a bit clunky. Now for me, I really didn't like the idea of having to comb through that and just manually find all those bits and just piece it together. So I went and did something slightly different and what I did is just create a little console application which is gonna pass all that information and just spit out the information that I want. I did design this tool for myself, but being as though that whole extraction process if you're doing it manually is pretty horrible. I thought I'd share it with everyone else. So if you are interested in using this tool, I'll leave a link in the description below to my GitHub so you can go and download that. And I did kind of just slap it together at like half two the other morning. So it's not the neatest or most standardized. And if you're interested in adding to it or changing parts of it, then feel free to do that and make some pull requests and I'll pull those in. But yeah, it's just a simple console app that passes that information and then displays it to us. I'm just going to give you a quick demo of it now, but if you're interested in it, I'm going to do a separate short little video just showing it off, and that should be linked in the description below as well. Okay then, so here's my little two-year key extractor tool. So it's just a console app with a command line interface. The first thing we need to do to use it is just set the config file path. And this file path is just the location of that XML that we just extracted from Smart Life. So here's my test one here, so I'm just going to grab that location. And then back in my command line tool, I'm just going to hit number one to set the config file path. So then it's going to ask me for the path and I'm just going to paste that in and hit enter. And that's told me the path has been set. So I'm going to hit enter again. From here then I can see what the path is currently mapped to and that looks right to me. And then this is where the magic happens. So if we now hit number two and hit enter, that's now printed out all of my devices with the name, the local key and the device ID. So I can just scroll through all of them here. So yeah, not bad. It's definitely better than reading through that whole XML file. But again, this is just optional. You don't have to do this. You can just do that manual process if you want to. As I said, I did create this tool for myself, so I haven't actually tested it on anyone else's config or setup. But if you are interested in that tool, go ahead and download it and let me know if it worked for you. If it doesn't work for you and enough people are interested, I'll actually spend a bit of time on it and make sure it does work. And there we go. Whether you've used my tool or you've manually combed through and grabbed your information, you should now have access to your local keys. With our local keys then, we can now set up the local to your integration in our Home Assistant. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll have a link to the video that I did previously which shows you the full setup of local to you. And you can just follow along with that if you want to, but you get local to you from Hacks and once it's installed, you can add devices to it. So you just go add integration and then local to you and it should automatically discover any of your local to your devices on your network. So I'm just gonna choose one from this list and just hit submit. It's then gonna ask you for that local key. So whether you manually extracted that or you used my tool, you just go into the tool then, find the device and then just copy and paste the local key. So give it a name, paste in the local key and then just hit submit. It will then ask you to set up the entities associated with that device. So this particular one is just a switch. 
and then you just fill in all the data points for that entity and just hit submit and then if you're done you can just leave that ticked and it should hopefully tell you you were successful and you can just click finish there and then there we go my device has now appeared in that list and that's pretty much it sorry if that end bit felt a bit rushed through I did previously cover setting up Local Tuya in my previous video, so if you want a bit more information and a bit more of a detailed breakdown, then be sure to check that one out. The aim of this video was primarily just to show you another way of getting your local keys so that you could use them and make use of them in the Local Tuya integration. As a quick summary then, we first downloaded Bluestacks, BS Tweaker and the SmartLife APK. We then set up and installed Bluestacks and installed the SmartLife APK. We then needed to sign into the Smart Life app just once in order for it to generate that config. Then we used BS Tweaker to extract that config from our emulated device and just place it on our desktop. And once we've done that, you either manually combed through the file or you had to go with my little tool and just extracted all the keys you wanted. And I think that was probably it. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop me a like rating. If you hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, you'll be alerted to any future video I do. If you previously had a go at using the developer tools and now you've tried this one, let me know in the comments which one you preferred to use. Also, if you have a go at using my little tool, let me know how you got on with that. If you are interested in using that tool, there will be a link for it in the description below. It is quite straightforward to use, it's just a command line interface, so push a number, hit enter and it will do its thing. And if you're interested in having a poke around the code and just wanting to refine it, then again, the GitHub will be linked in the description below. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. I think we're about five minutes in without actually physically doing anything with the tutorial.